Hello. Welcome, we're back. You know, you already know. It's, uh, it's Wednesday. Got the chat. There's the chat. Everyone is here. We got the chat. We got stream elements. We got deafens, slime molder, you know, the same green shade. They're here. Um, we're back. It's Wednesday on the lake. And um, everything is going good. Everything is good, you know. The same as usual. We'll probably see the bear, you know, over there. Up there. Okay. So yeah, another week. Um, didn't need to turn the air conditioning on this week as well. <clears throat> it's always good, you know. And it is not that hot. Just slightly hot, you know. It's not not so hot that it's so bad. It's like a you know pleasant temperature as long as I don't have the doors closed. Unfortunately, I do have the doors closed because it reduces the noise from from outside when I'm streaming. I had a great day. It was an okay. It was it was an okay day. Not too much happened. Um, you know, just just the usual. Just sitting here. I did get a confirmation on a few things, though. Welcome, Stanley. Um, I have an interview on Friday, 11 a.m. This company, this company, like, is really slow at scheduling stuff. Like, I had the interview on Friday, last Friday, and, like, I thought that went well. And then they didn't respond on Monday, and I was like, okay, maybe it didn't go well. Maybe they actually hated my interview but then they replied on Tuesday and they're like we'd like to schedule like another another interview and so I replied with my availability they did not respond on Tuesday they responded today though and then they scheduled the meeting for Friday and I'm just like you, you spend all this time there's so much so much time between between these interviews also welcome Zoli Cool down a lot here, 16 at C, 61 F. That's a pretty, that's like, that's kind of cold actually. Well, not cold, but like, I wouldn't consider that summer temperature, you know? 61 Fahrenheit, that's like, that's pretty cool. It's like autumn. It's like, that's like autumn temperature, that's nice. Uh, but yeah, I have an interview on Friday. The weird thing is like, I asked, um, I think the person that's scheduling these interviews they are not very responsive <laughs> like i asked him like oh yeah well this interview that's coming up do you, do you happen to know like what kind of interview it is is it like a live coding interview is it like a um, system design he, he didn't respond he just scheduled the meeting so i have no idea what kind of interview this is i'm assuming it's probably coding i'll probably have to code something on friday i don't know I guess I will find out um, and then I'm pretty sure once that meeting is over we'll have like next week you know they probably won't respond on Monday they're gonna respond on Tuesday saying you know either you know we'd like to schedule four more interviews because I think that's how they do things it's probably gonna take a really long time let's see it rained really hard for two days straight Partially made of sugar. What? what does that mean? What does that even mean? Is that a, is that a German phrase transliterated into into English? I don't even know. It is okay. <clears throat> it makes sense that Deffens understood it. You know the Germans in chat. They got the they got their green names. Everyone here except Stanley has a green name. What's up with that? And stream element, I guess. Yeah, that's that's my day. Um, I've also also welcome Cole. I'm also gonna meet up with Toaster and Vera on on um, Thursday next week. Toaster is gonna be visiting New York, so I will not be streaming next Thursday. Did I say welcome Duck? I did not. Yeah, so so he'll be here. 
Um, we're gonna have some food, you know, we're gonna go, I don't know, I don't know what we're doing. Apparently he's not on vacation, apparently he's still doing work. Excited to hear that I'm going outside. So, you know, I, I go outside sometimes. I'll have stories, you know, I'll come back on that Friday afterwards and I'll be like, yo, you, you'll never guess what happened, guys. I went outside and then a bunch of stuff happened. Uh, welcome, Mooney, as well. Dollar pizza? No, we're gonna have Japanese food. It's actually pretty expensive. There's this place called Otoya. They exist in Japan as well, I've been there. But they have a branch in New York. Well, they have two locations in New York. And so we're gonna go over there. And I guess there's something called Restaurant Week. I don't really know what that means. But I guess they have like some deals. It is kind of expensive. It's like pretty expensive. Like if you go if you go to Otoya in Japan, it's like about ten dollars I guess for, for like a meal. Oh can you guess how much it is here? It's freaking like thirty dollars. It's it's insane. Same thing for like a lot of a lot of fancy like like Japanese ramen places. In Japan it's like ten dollars USD. You go over here it's like twenty, twenty-five dollars. Unbelievable. And that's even with the discount. No New York pizza. I actually, I ordered pizza um, yesterday. They have leftovers. I, I ate it yesterday, I ate it today. I'll probably eat it tomorrow as well. It's pretty good. I, I noticed like every time I order pizza from this place, um, it feels like the ingredients are different every time. Like they use smaller pepperonis this time. The crust was thinner this time. Um, I don't know. It's still good though. It's still good. It's just different every time. But I, ha I haven't had dollar pizza in, in a long time. It's not the same. It's not even the same. It's fine though. It's fine. It, it was good. It still is good. But yeah, besides that, besides going out um, next Thursday, have an interview this Friday. Um, I don't know. I see a lot of people are moving to to Miski. That's uh, the the Fediverse server. I've been, been seeing a lot of tweets about it. A lot of artists they're like, "Yo, check it out. There's this thing, Miski." And I, I don't know. I'm considering <laughs> waiting for it to blow up. Look, I'm considering setting setting up my own. Um, because I've been running my own Mastodon instance for like five to six years already, and I sort of I'm I'm aware of how things work. Um, I know some people that started their own Miski server. And you guys know Oracle Cloud has a free tier, and that it's like a very generous free tier. You could host your own like Fediverse instance forever for free. If you know how to do it, if you know how to set it up, which is like a bit of an obstacle, but I know how to do it. So I'm considering setting up my own, like, my own Fediverse server outside of my, my Mastodon one. It's like, it's surprisingly good. They give you like a lot of free resources. Remind me in a month. I'll, I'll do it this weekend, probably. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, yeah, you could you could have your own, right? You could be Mooneybug at Mooneybug.com. You could have your own Miski instance if you want. I could have Wolfie. Well, Wolfie.com is taken, so I can't I can't do that. I could have like Wolfie.dev, you know, for developing. I have Wolfie.website. I think IE is not really a. It's not actually a domain, so I can't use it. But I was setting up setting up Miski locally. It's pretty easy to set up, actually. I got it to work. Uh, welcome, Choker Jacks. Let's see, can we all just choose a Twitter alternative and move? Well, here's the thing, though. If you go, if you have your own Fediverse account, you could have it on Mastodon, you could have it on Miski, you could have Pleroma. I was considering there's like a lot of new alternatives now. Like when I first started Mastodon, um, first started using Mastodon like five years ago, Mastodon was pretty much the only thing that really existed. 
Nowadays, though, there's a lot. Like, after running a Mastodon instance for like five to six years, I know that Mastodon is not... <laughs> it's, it's very heavyweight. It's very hard to run. Um, there's better ones. I didn't like Mastodon. I think a lot of people found, find it confusing. Which is surprising, because I find Miski even more confusing. I set up my uh, a local Miski instance, and there's like a billion different things going on. And I'm just like, I don't know what any of this is. And like, I know like how to use the Fedoras. Like, I don't know, there's like a widgets everywhere. You got like emote reactions. You can have things spin around. I got one on an instance that uses a Miski fork. Yeah, I was looking at, um, there's one called Firefish. Apparently that's like a like a forked version of a Miski. Another alternative, there's like Pleroma, there is um, Akoma, which I wanted to try setting up. That one uses Elixir, it's kind of weird, I don't know. But yeah, if you have an account on one of those, it doesn't matter. You don't need to, you don't need to wait for people, you know. The Mastodon instance I set up five years ago, I you can follow people from other, you know, I could follow Miski from my Mastodon instance. Miski reactions. Yeah, Alcoma also supports Miski reactions. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people are going to be confused. They're going to be like, oh, I love this Miski thing. What is this? They sign up and then they're like, wait a second. This guy's from a different website and he's following me on Miski. What's going on? What is this? Just pick the least bad Fediverse. I think the best... Well, okay, this is a hard, for, hard for me to recommend, but like... The best thing to do if you know technology is to set up your own. But I know a lot of people that you probably do not know how to do that. But like in that case, you don't depend on anyone else. You could just run your own instance. Which, you know, is a bit annoying, but I've been doing it. And it's nice. Because like, if you own your own data, then if someone just shuts down their instance, you know, it doesn't matter. On your own instance kind of feel lonely? No, like you can follow people. How does discovery work? You could you just follow people, I don't know. But I feel like there's so many people on MISKEY that using the local timeline just doesn't, it's not, it doesn't make sense. How does discovery work when you post? Um, if someone follows you and someone is on another instance, they can see it. I'll join Wolfie's Miski. No, it'll be my own. I, I've learned <laughs> I've learned enough about setting up my own Macedon that I've learned that I don't want to host other people's stuff. I just want to be in charge of my own data. I don't want people like going on my server, signing up, following people, and then like have to deal with all that stuff. Okay. It seems saucy to host other people's stuff. Yeah, that's that's my issue. When I created the the Aikatsu Mastodon instance, like a lot of people would just sign up and they had no inst they had no interest in Aikatsu. They would just start posting stuff and I'm just like, this is not this is not what this is for. <laughs> That's not what this is for. And then like we have some people that like they have questionable questionable things, you know? They start following like porn accounts and there's like a lot of spam and I'm just like I don't wanna deal with this. I don't wanna deal with this. Also welcome solely. Yeah, the fear. But anyway, I turned off registration on my Aikatsu Mastodon like sometime last year. I never turned it back on. And it's been going fine. <laughs> it's been perfectly fine. I don't want to host people's stuff. I just want... It's just for me. Yeah, there's that. There's like legal issues, you know. Someone just signs up, starts following people that post illegal content. I don't want that. I also don't want to like moderate people, you know, because like sometimes if someone if someone signs up and they have like an argument with someone and then, you know, I don't know. It's just weird. I don't want to do that. I mean, I could I could set up like an instance for like wealthy viewers. I could have like a like a 200k point points redeem. What the heck is this? Discover the new look of Windows 10. Um, no, Windows 11. Sorry. No. What if I had like, what if I made my own instance and I had like, you know, a 200k point channel redeem or if you redeem it, you can, you're allowed to make an account on my instance. Alright, you could do that. I'll host, you know, you can depend on me to host your content forever. 
if you've been around for that long, you're probably trustworthy enough. Really love your Aikatsu instance, haven't used it in forever. It's still up. If you still have an account, you can still sign in. And like, you are an actual Aikatsu fan, so, you know, I think it's fine if you're there. So you're kind of expecting in the future, Fediverse will be like email where everyone just marks every small instance as spam. People already do that. Look, the bear is back. We don't even care anymore. The bear is so common nowadays. <clears throat> but, um, you know, it's, it's basically like email. It's already like email. You know like how everyone just uses Gmail? It's like that. Everyone is either on the official mastodon.social or now everyone's going to misskey.io right They're, they've basically become the gmail of, of um, the fediverse but i don't know it's, that's a thing what do you do when the biggies don't want to federate with you well i feel like the big the big instances do are fine with federating with small servers the issue is like if you're a small server and another person has like, you know, they're running their own server and they're just like, oh, it, it takes a lot of resources to fed federate with small instances. It's, it's less common than you think though. It's not, it's not that big of an issue. What even the Fediverse? It's basically like decentralized social media, right? Like imagine if you're on Twitter or sorry, if you're on X, right? If Twitter, <laughs> if Twitter, if you could follow someone on Instagram, like from Twitter, or like someone could start their own website, they could follow you from, from Twitter. It's like that. It's like email, basically. <clears throat> right, you can run your own email provider, or you could just use Gmail. But like you think of like someone on, someone on Gmail can still talk to someone on like Yahoo Mail. They can still talk to someone on Hotmail or whatever. I don't even, like, what <laughs> What do people even use for email nowadays? I feel like everyone just uses Gmail. I don't, I don't know if, like, Yahoo, I, I never see anyone use Yahoo. Hotmail, I don't even see that anymore. Everyone just uses Gmail. Also, welcome, Lakeith. Imagine if Twitter was about a thousand times less convenient. Oh, you mean like it is right now? I use my own, but that's for business stuff? Yeah, that's also true. But yeah, most people, they just use Gmail. Proton Mail. That's a bit less common. Some people use like an, um, an email address from their ISP. Actually, don't, isn't there like, doesn't Apple have email? Apple has like iCloud.com or whatever. Since I saw a few artists move to MissKey, I decided it was time. I feel like that's what most people are doing. Everyone's like resistant to change and then they see they see their favorite Japanese artist move to Miski and they're like yo I gotta do this whatever this thing is I'm, I gotta do it. and that's pretty much what's happening whether they stay on there I don't know right I've seen this happen a billion times as someone who's been using Mastodon forever I've seen a ton of people they're just like I'm gonna move to this social media I'm gonna move to this one and then they, they all end up just going back to Twitter See, so haven't hit the rate limit since it was first introduced. I think they got rid of that for, for Twitter. Yeah, Apple has their own email. Do they have a mobile app? Um, they they have mobile apps that are compatible. It's not it's not by the original developers, but they exist. It's neat that people are more aware about what happens to their data. Yeah, that's also the thing, right? If you sign up for like a small instance. If the admin like gets sick or like they can't update the server anymore, it, you're kind of it's like that's the issue with federated stuff, is that you kind of have to depend on the admins. You know, it has to be someone you you sort of trust. But like I run my own server and I trust myself, so so I know that my data is fine. I'm sure everyone that uses my Ikatsu Mastodon knows that I'm gonna be running this server basically forever. So they don't have to worry about it. <laughs> it's not going to disappear. Like maybe one day I'll die, right? And then, it, you know, then I can't manage the server. But until that happens, it's fine. 
Yeah, co-host. I know some people that still use co-host. The only reason I know is because I see them post on Twitter. Every time they make a co-host post, they post on Twitter and they're like, hey, check out this co-host, co-host um, thing that I wrote. And I never check it out, but I know that they post on there. I can finally follow all the people that moved to Macedon. You can move your stuff though. No, you can, you can redirect your account. You can't necessarily move all of your data over. You could move your followers over. That's a thing. If you want to move to a different instance, I know like some, you can export your data and you'll have it, but your your tweets, not your tweets, whatever it's called, your posts, they don't, they don't get moved over. Yeah, trust no one. Like I know some people that started using, they, they originally started on my iKatsu Mastodon forever ago, and then they moved, they moved to a different server. That's what I mean by less convenient. No, but then like you're, you can't export your data from Twitter, so it's not any worse, right? In fact, it's more flexible. Like if Twitter dies, you can't, you already can't move your tweet somewhere else, right? I don't know what you, like what do you mean by convenience? Fediverse seems like a pain. Yeah, I feel like if you if you just sign up for a big instance, if you just sign up on on Miskey, it's probably fine, right? The alternative is to just stay on Twitter and complain about it the whole time, or you could actually like do something about it, right? And I feel like most people they're just staying on Twitter and complaining about it. It's fine. Yeah, Miskey.io is probably fine. There's only one Twitter. Yeah, there's there's one Twitter, but Twitter's like is bad now. It's not even Twitter anymore. It's X. There's like the guy who took um the guy who had the Twitter account known as X. I think they forcibly took the account away from him. They didn't even give him money. I think they offered to give him some merch or something. Not on Twitter, I still complain a bit. Yeah, I'm not even really on Twitter anymore. Like, the only time I use Twitter is to post my daily art posts. And, um, to post when I'm going live. I need a site that aggregates all the million social medias that you post to all at the same time. Those definitely exist. It's definitely real. Yeah, sorry we took your account. Oh well. But that's, you know, that's what's going on. I will consider setting up my own instance at some point. Gave him a handle like X with a bunch of numbers. Man, <laughs> I feel like they could have sold their account, right? If you, have, if you have a Twitter account that's like a short name, I'm sure you get a ton of people that are like, hey, I'll buy your account for like a thousand dollars. And I wonder if that guy probably got a bunch of offers and he could have, he could have taken them. Imagine, like, imagine if that guy did sell his account and then the next day Twitter took it away from him. He would still have that money. And following 50 people again on the Fediverse. Look, I think it's cool, okay? I like the Fediverse. I'm biased because I'm like, I know how it works technically. But I don't think it's a, it's not the same as Twitter. It's not the same. It's like limitation, you know, thing, federation, it has problems. <clears throat> Sorry, has problems. But it's better for like long term because everyone sort of, sort of has more say in what goes into their data. Someone wanted to buy my Twitter account. Yeah, your account, it's like, I feel like if you have a four letter Twitter account, it's like probably really rare. Right, Cole's Twitter account is just Cole. Just the word Cole, not even any extra letters. I said, wow, that's cool. That's pretty cool. That, you know, that is the state of society. At least some billionaire can't buy it. That's also true. It's also true. Well, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. 
like here's the thing though like i don't even post on twitter anymore if i were to even make my own like fediverse server i probably wouldn't even really use it that's the messed up part is that i've been so like away from social media for so long that i don't even i'm not even interested Right? I'm only I'm only interested because of like the technical aspect. Like, oh yeah, it's, it would be kind of cool to set up my own server, but like I don't know if I'll actually use it. You know, if I want to socialize, I don't post on social media. I just stream, and then people just check out my stream, and then we just talk about stuff. Then we complain about things. You know, we talk about social media. Oh, you guys see Twitter did this thing. You guys see Elon Musk did this thing. That's my, that's my socialization. That's what I do. I think you guys should do it too. I think you guys, instead of going on social media, you should just start streaming. Just talking aloud to yourself. And then sometimes some people will show up. They'll say things. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, Toaster. If everyone is streaming, who is watching uh, the other streamers? You're not all streaming at the same time, right? Like I'm streaming, and then Choco Jack streams later, and then I and then I watch Choco Jack's stream, and then she's watching my stream. You know, it's only a problem if everyone is streaming at the same time, and that that doesn't happen need a constant supply of cute animal pics um well i don't know you could go, you could go on twitter <laughs> you can go on x you could go on reddit i don't even know for every group of 20 people 10 of them are 20 view streamers who are t the 20 people 20 a uh, 20 view do you know how many people that is Toaster, you, you don't know the you don't know the the terms. Also, welcome, Hamplo. Twenty viewers. How many how many viewers is that? That's like it's like a billion. Here's one thing you should learn. You no, know, it's not it's not twenty. It's twenty digits. When someone says a two view streamer, they don't mean literally two views. They mean two digit. If someone says three views, it's a three digit view. <laughs> right. Twenty a twenty view. That's like freaking. I don't even know how many. That's like a lot. <laughs> That's like a lot. That's more than Derma. Yeah, I also thought it literally meant that. I learned on Hamplow's stream though. He talked about it. He was like, you guys know that uh, it actually refers to the digits. Yeah, that is the thing. I also know because Mint Costella showed up one time and she was like, oh yeah, I'm just a three view. And I'm like, wait a second. And then I was like, wait, oh yeah, that's that's what that means. Yeah, you guys are learning. That's the terminology. Yeah, now you know. Now you can be like Yeah. No, I don't think a zero view a zero view is not even possible. Because even we talked we've talked about this already. The number zero is already one digit. So someone with zero viewers would still, I think they would still be a one view, right? Probably. But yeah, that's that's how things work. That's how numbers work. Twenty views. Anyway, at Toaster, I already told everyone that you're going to New York. That we're having dinner next Thursday. That's happening. More like a non viewer Yeah, more like a more like a person without viewers. Good dinner, yeah. It'll be good. It'll be money. It'll cost money. No. No is different from zero though. You got zero. You got no. You got undefined. There's so many things. And yeah, dox your location. If dox all of his plans, 
Well, I had to tell them because, you know, if I, I usually stream, you know, sushi. It's not a sushi place, though. It's not sushi. And also, they have multiple locations, so you don't know which one it is. And you don't know what time it is. Yeah, that's, that's happening. Try setting up OBS. Yeah, you could do it. You could stream. You could go on twitch.tv, stream. And then maybe someone will be there, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, I had to tell people because, you know, I normally stream on, on Thursdays and I'd have to be like, Oh yeah, this Thursday I'm not going to be here because of whatever. You know, you can't have people showing up and they're like, wait a second. Wolfie's not streaming? It's 5 p.m. Eastern time. What's he doing? And that'll be, oh, sorry guys. I got a thing to do. Didn't realize you were cutting into my stream time. Well, yeah, because like, I always stream. <laughs> I always stream at the same time six days a week. So it's pretty hard to not cut into my stream time, to be honest. Unless you do like, you know, afternoon. But then like, even then, it would have to end pretty early. So, you know, it's it's fine. The only way to avoid cutting into stream time is like have it on Sunday. But, you know, that's, that's a bit of an ask, you know. It's fine. It's fine to miss a day here and there. But it's not like, it's not like this is my job, right? It's not like I get paid for this. I mean, I do get paid for this, but not really. Am I unemployed? I, I am, but I have an interview this Friday and possibly sometimes next week. So I don't know. I'm unemployed at the moment, but maybe not in the future. Maybe at some point. Sunday stream? No. Imagine streaming on Sunday. Who does that? That's so weird. No one streams on Sunday. Sun yeah, Sunday is rest day. Sunday egg for first scramble. That doesn't even make sense. Sunday? I hardly even know it. Right, guys? Sunday, I find it quite simple. You're telling me Sunday. Sunday. Um, su Sunday. What about Moon Day? What about Sun. Uh, what about Daughter Day? What about Sun Night? about um yeah what about the other things huh anyway look at this guys you can put this up here now oh no I'm gonna put this here no we cannot put this here Sunday, what? Yeah, I already said the moon and the night. I already said that. Yeah, I managed to stack them. We have learned that um, every every time you quit and reopen the game, whatever was in the air gets stuck there. Marvel Superior Moon Knight. What? Isn't that the Dark Knight? Okay, look, we've done it. Figured out what made Twitter so easy to use. Well, Twitter started off really easy, right? They had text messaging. They, had, they didn't even have images. Welcome, sun. Yeah, we were just talking about the sun. Sunday. We were literally talking about Sunday. I think that's cool. Number of words per line. 
you mean like <clears throat> number of um oh you mean like the word wrapping like the columns are kind of narrow yeah there's an issue like if you go on a website and they don't have word wrapping and you just have like a really long text it's hard to read have they ever looked at books right books don't go for long yeah, word wrapping is nice Good. would recommend yeah, they do wrap words remember back in the day when like a website would be like this this page is best viewed on an on 800 by 600 monitor and that would be the most common size yeah exactly I back in the day I had like my own like maple story website and I specifically designed it so that all the layout would be optimally viewed in like a 800 by 600 window. And I'm sure if you check it now, it's like you can't read anything. Also have a good night, Devins. Custom CSS. My instance and probably Miski don't have it. Image, images are huge. I don't know. I'm sure there's a setting for it somewhere, maybe. My Neopets website, yeah, so true. I had that as well. Classic two sidebar. I wonder what there's like probably a lot of those websites are still they still exist, right? The I think the original Space Jam website still exists. And a four by three monitor, what's the site? Um I don't know if it's available anymore. Like I have the files, but I don't think it's I don't think it's up. I don't know. It was nice though. I, I custom made that thing. I edited things in MS Paint. I made the background. I made it tile. It looped. It was cool. It was great. Didn't they update the Space Jam website? Did they? Did they ruin the Space Jam website? Also, did I welcome you, Flotato? I don't think I did. Welcome. A space Jam. What were they even jamming about? We're out here spacing and jamming. Actually, I remember when at my previous previous job when we had an office. Um, every week we would choose a different music video to play. So it's like, we would have like a TV, right? And we would do like stand up at, I think 10 a.m. every day. And they would play a song uh, at 10 a.m. as like an alarm, you know? And be like, okay, stand up time, we're gonna play this song. And every week it was a different song. One time I suggested the Space Jam theme. And then they put it up there and they're like, I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know, I don't, I don't really like this. And then I was like, oh man, they chose a different song. You know, they, they chose a different song by the group that did the Space Jam song. What was their name? Like Quad City DJs. Yeah, I suggested the Space Jam theme. And they did not like it. They chose another song by them though. And I don't think it was as good. I didn't even know they made other songs, right? <laughs> I, had, I had no idea Quad City G DJs was even, was even a thing. You have to click one level deeper to get to the OG website. I guess that makes sense. As long as they weren't like editing the uh, <laughs> the OG website. Right, they can't ruin that. They don't even understand. Also, they didn't even choose like the best part of the song. They just, they, he just jumped to like a random part of the song and it's like, this isn't catchy. They didn't, even, they didn't even get to the part where it was like, you know, um, the classic part of Space Jam. The part where they jam and also slam. And also welcome to Japan. That is everything. 
Um, you guys see um, Holo En? You guys see that, huh? There's uh, there's there's twins or whatever. What's up with that? What's that about? We don't know. There's literally nothing to talk about because they didn't debut yet. And reading speculation is pointless. Are they supposed to be wanted criminals? I guess that's their lore. No one really cares about lore. People say there were other twin VTubers that graduated. There were. There was. The Japan tour guide ones. I don't know. It's impossible to say. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that they have the same account. I love four out of five of the designs. Okay, you don't you don't need to tell us which one you don't like. But that is interesting to know. What if what if the one you don't like is one of the twins? Wouldn't that be messed up? You're like, I like everything except this one specific twin. Am I gonna watch their debuts? Um I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like I don't really care. I'll be honest, I don't really care. But like I don't know. Maybe. I don't even know when it is. When when are they debuting? What if they're debuting right now? Literally right now. They probably do it over the weekend, right? Usually. Or Friday. I saw a tweet saying they're doing the shorter debut style. I don't know. Well I know like the last time they did debuts, I don't think it was the short debut style. The one I don't like is the one I'll end up watching the most. It's always like this. Lakeith hates all of them. What if you hate all of them equally? Then you watch all of them equally. Say, so don't really care to watch the debuts. Also, don't watch YouTube streams. Yeah, I don't. I don't watch YouTube streams as much lately. Like I just tune in sometimes. I'm sure we'll see clips, right? They always get recommended. You can't go on YouTube without seeing some sort of clip recommended in your timeline. But I feel like most people are probably interested in watching the, the Twins debut. Because it's like, you know, it's pretty interesting. I don't think corporate... I don't think there's been a corporate VTubing thing that has really done that. Well, there's Hime Hino, but they're not really corporate, right? So it's pretty unique. Well, no, you got, you got, the. Uh, <laughs> there are quite a few, like, VTubers that, sh like, have two VTubers that share the same channel, right? There's Himehina, you got the, the Peanuts, uh, guy, and the, what's her name? You know, that one. <laughs> you got, um, other ones. Yeah, Marpril as well, they're not really VTubers, but they do music. I feel like a lot of them do music. Got those, there's like another one, I don't even know. Sigrid and Bird, right? On Twitch. Um, there's probably several others. It's been a while since I've seen new debuts. I like how awkward they are. Yeah. I don't know, I'm, I'm not a fan of watching debuts anymore. Cause like, I can't. I kind of just don't care. <laughs> I'll, be honest. I'll just be honest. I don't really care about debuts. Cause like the way they act on their debuts, it's definitely not what they'll be like. I guess like you know you can see what their interests are. But I also don't care. Yeah, the market is too saturated. There's too many VTubers. But I know, like, people that only watch Halloween, they're probably, you know, they're probably, like, they got nothing else to do. I don't want to say they got nothing else to do, but I mean, like, a lot of the Halloween hasn't been streaming as much as they used to. And so they have less stuff to watch. And, you know, they refuse to watch other stuff. So, you know, here's Halloween 3, and now they got stuff to watch. But me, I already have people to watch. Right? I've already talked about how I watch the same streamers. I don't need new ones. Did I have a debut? Um, I've never formally done a debut. 
I've never had like a slideshow where I'm like, here's what my interests are. Here's my favorite anime. Here's uh, my favorite games. You have to learn of that on your own, you know? It's like, if you want to learn my interests, you have to watch all of my streams. And then you understand what kind of games I like. What if those streamers stop? What do you mean? Hamflow, Chocojax, um, Northern Lion, they're never gonna stop. Imagine if they stop, that'd be so messed up. Imagine if Hamflow stops streaming. That's fricked up. Imagine if Chocojax stops streaming. Imagine, okay, if Northern Lion stops streaming, that'd be like the worst. I wouldn't know what to do. I'd be like, oh no, man, I'm so parasocial now. Who else am I gonna watch? Northern Lion's not here. What am I gonna do? And then I'll just watch someone else. Let's see, who even needs debuts? We need to have a VTuber Battle Royale. They do that in Apex, though. <clears throat> Apex Legends. Also, welcome, Snackerako. Can't wait for the Wolfie debut telling us about his favorite colors. Do they do that though? Like I know Niji Sanji when they do debuts, they have an official like color hex code and they usually mention that on stream. But I don't know if like other, other, other VTubers do that. One must dedicate years, yeah. If, like imagine if like if you met someone in real life and they like they did all this introduction like hey here's who i am here's my interests. i like this thing i like this thing it's like you know that's that's not how things work you know you just talk to them and then i guess gradually you learn their interests i don't know why i'm comparing like watching a debut stream to like to actually meeting someone in real life when they're not really the same at all <laughs> Yeah, they're not even real. <clears throat> they're not even real. Imagine if YouTubers are real. It's not just about the streams. What do you mean? Let's see, every time there's a new VTuber debut, I'm just like, did they list Arkea? No, I sleep. Toaster only cares about his own game. Well, what if they list um, Outer Wilds, though? Well, I watch, like, I tune into VTuber debuts to see if they, they're a fan of Aikatsu. And if they are, then they get bonus points. But then, like, I probably still won't watch them. <laughs> probably. If, okay, if they list catch and release, I'll, you know, I'll watch them. I doubt this will ever happen. Right, if someone, if someone, if a corporate VTuber, like, actually streamed catch and release, I would watch at least one of their streams. Holy frick. This thing, okay, this thing fell fell down over here and me in VR, I thought this thing was in front of me in real life. And I was like, holy frick, I gotta catch it. But then I remembered I was in a game, so it doesn't matter. What the heck was that? I think I spooked. I wasn't even expecting it. Uh, welcome, Nutritious. <clears throat> Are they not similar? Well, no, because like when you're watching a VTuber debut, you don't really like you don't really know them, right? It's like someone explaining their interests, but like if you're meeting someone in real life, you know, you could become their friend for real. When I debut, I'll make sure the list I caught to and catch and release. Yo, Hamflow is in the new Holo Live generation. What are you doing? You gotta, you gotta plan for your stream. Hamflow. Which, which one do you think Hamflow is? Do you think he's one of the twins? He could be. It could be him. You could. <laughs> wouldn't that be funny? If you just like. Tune into the whole live EN3 debut stream, and then suddenly, like, one of the twins is just like, you know, what do you expect? And then suddenly you hear Hanflo's voice. You'll know when, when they're like, when they make the same jokes that he does. <clears throat> You'll be like, 
Um, Holo Live. What about what about Holo? Um, death. I don't know. Holo, Holo Live. Holo Live. What about Hole A through um, N Live? Huh? Yeah, exactly. Then you'll know. Then you'll know it's him. Primed and ready to react. I'm reacting. He's a react streamer. Hamflo is the rock girl. I don't actually know their designs. I, I didn't pay too much attention. The only one that I that I sort of looked at was the twins. It's like that's the one everyone is interested in. You're like how's how are they gonna do this? Do they like are they actually related? I imagine they probably are, because like it'd be hard for them to share a channel if they didn't know each other in real life. Yeah, it's hamming something. The hamming distance. Hamflo and Nabunon are the twins. Um, doxed. Rock as in Rockstar or literally made of rock? Um, when I first thought of it, I thought of like literally made of rock. But then I thought about it and I was like, it probably means like the rock star. Yeah, the ham distance. Literally made of is are they literally made of rock? Are they actually? I don't believe this. <clears throat> anyway, I don't when when are when are the debuts anyway? Is it Friday? Saturday? I could check, but no, I have to catch this fish. But yeah, if one of them actually- I, I'm waiting for like a corporate VTuber to actually stream catch and release. 29th and 30th? Um, when is that? <laughs> is that- You're gonna have to be- Okay, so today is the 26th, so in four days. In three days, okay, three days from- that's Saturday. Saturday and Sunday. Rock as in Bochi. Yeah, Bochi. What if they do what if they debuted just Bochi the Rock? Like what if what if one of them was like the voice actress for Bochi? And she somehow spoke English perfectly. Wouldn't that be cool? Bochi. No, Bochi. What about Boat A through the Boat <laughs> Boat A through D. When is someone gonna ho host a Bochi watch along so I can finally watch it? Um, never. No one would ever watch a Bochi the Rock. That's just a thing that people pretend. It's just like a like a big, you know, just like a, a big thing. Everyone's gaslighting me into thinking it's a real show. Everyone just made up a bunch of characters. Also, welcome Tag Barrel. Don't we already have the Bochi VA speaking perfect English? Um, I don't know actually. It will happen if we host it. Well, I would need to like actually watch it though. Right? Just because someone's doing a watch along doesn't mean that I will tune in. Because like the Karagi Discord, they do watch alongs pretty often, and I've never tuned into any of them. People on other Discords have done watch alongs of things. I never tune into them. Cause like I got other stuff to do. I got other streams to watch. Sometimes people watch like Netflix shows, and I'm like, I don't feel like watching this. You can do it on your server. I don't even have like a room for it. <laughs> yeah, I don't even have a voice channel. You guys literally can't even talk to each other via voice. Yeah, stream pill. We're literally streaming right now. Let's see, the whole black is no thing. I think I have seen some clips of that. Since I never watched the show, I don't know what that context is. 
imagine watching along. Or well, maybe if someone did a watch along of um, if if the Spider Verse second movie came out digitally, I may watch that. I may because like I'm actually interested in it because I watched the first movie and I was like, that's a good movie. And the first time I watched that was via a uh, watch along, via an Amelia Watson watch along. Anyway, I should hydrate. I'm gonna hydrate right now. All right. Let's see. As Lily said, recently learned a new pill turn. I don't even know what that. What does that even mean? I don't even know what that is. Do you have not either? I think it's her trying to accuse a black player in Among Us of not doing his tasks. Oh, like the actual voice actress was playing Among Us. I see. Watch along. I'd rather watch a short. Yeah. A YouTube short. A new pill. This guy is pilled. This guy is swan pilled. It's such a specific joke I just made here. No one even understands that one. So here's the joke. I'm going to explain the joke that I just made. Swan pilled. There's a video game known as Super Auto Pets, and there's an item known as a pill. And uh, there's a meme in Northern Lions chat where he says, they say to pill the swan, which is pointless. There's no reason you would feed a pill to a swan in that game, but people tell him to. And that was, that was the meme. I've explained the meme and it doesn't really explain why it's funny. Yeah, the, the pill kills the pet. And there's no benefit from killing the swan with the pill. Unless you have another synergy. But anyway, that's why it's funny. That's... it's so funny, guys. The bog pill. From the same toxic communities, what? What are you, what are you even saying? Pilling the swan is a bad move. In most situations. But there may be a case where you actually do want to pill this one. Like if you have another animal in Super Auto Pets and that one has an effect, like if a friendly pet dies or faints, sorry, they use the word faint. If a friendly pet faints, then do something. Then you can pill the swan. And you can get like a bonus. See, what community are the pill terms from even? I thought it was incels, doomers. The pill is from the Matrix. That's, that's the origin of it. It's when you take one of other pill. But it's used, it's used in many situations. And he knows the Matrix. He knows math. He's definitely done matrix multiplication at least once. The original pills are incel terms. Became a meme with incel -y people. Okay, I didn't know that. But like when people say based and whatever pilled, like that's that's the modern incarnation of that, right? Like this guy, this guy is totally based and um, fishing pilled or whatever. What is bog pill? It was basically sexist. Okay, I didn't know that. 
Is it sub? Of course it's Reddit. <laughs> I guess I'm not surprised that it was on Reddit. Oh, that Reddit. You know, ever since they killed third-party apps, I haven't used Reddit like at all. I, I actually used to have like a an app on my phone. I used to actually read Reddit some sometimes, but now I literally don't. I've never been back, and I think that's good because then I realized I'd never read anything of value on there. See, bog pilled means you've woken up on the Bogdanoff conspiracy. I don't even know what that is. Also, welcome a bipolar carp. The pills got co-opted into literally every type of community. Yeah, they've been pill pilled. Every community is pill pilled. TR slash place was fun. Was it though? I like the Toho thing they did. That was cool. Let's see, remove the app from my phone a year ago, I could stop reading pointless stuff in bed. Yeah, I feel like every time... Like, every time there was VTuber news, I'd be like, Oh yeah, I gotta see what people are saying about this. I gotta check out Reddit to see what they're saying. I don't know why I thought that. But like, every time I would read it, it's all like speculation. There's nothing really interesting going on. Sometimes someone would talk about indie VTubers. But like, no one... <laughs> no, no one does that. No one talks about indie VTubers on there. It's always corporate. Um, and then I was like... It's like, why am I reading this? Like, these people don't have insight into stuff. It's always like, Yo, do you guys see this thing? I heard this thing happen. I heard this thing. And now that I don't read any of that stuff, I'm just like, maybe it's for the best. See, in the same way that based can mean any- Oh, frick. <laughs> No. In the same way as base can mean anything, red pill can too. For more innocent meaning, base is doing your own thing. Red pill is being in the known. You see, I was not aware of the difference. I don't even remember which one is which, right? It's like you can take this pill or you can take the other pill. I don't remember which one is which. Didn't we have r slash place the other day? It ended with... Yes, it did. It totally did. They were efficient. They don't even know. Let's see, Reddit is good for guides and tutorials if you don't want to use Discord. Yeah, I hate using Discord for stuff. Well, if he's not fan community pilled, I don't need to interact with fan communities anymore. There's very little value. For a lot of things. I mean, it's just like, you know, people are just like, hey, check out this thing. Check out this thing. What do you guys think about this thing? And I'm like, why do I care about these people's opinions? Why do I care about them speculating about this stuff? It's not like they have any extra information. It's fun sometimes. Well, yeah, but I find that I don't really care anymore. Blue is living in ignorance, red is doing the truth. I see, I see. So that's why, that's okay. When they say it's red pilled, that makes sense. The chat isn't fans. You guys aren't even fans. You guys are just people. You guys are just individuals living your own lives. Discord is going to create a void of information. Yeah, we talk about this all the time. We talk about this constantly, using using Discord for um, actual useful information. Would not recommend. But yeah, that's um, that's Reddit. Don't really use it anymore. Yeah, and I think that's good. I think more people should do what I'm doing. Because I know what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> not using social media, really. Not really using Reddit. Just fishing every Wednesday. Just streaming to people. 
That's the life. That's what you guys should do. Why doesn't everyone just do what I'm doing? Best Discord guides are hosted externally, which is good. Yeah, I feel like people should not be using Discord for like super important stuff. It's out here living my life. See, the blue pill is just a sleeping pill. Allows the Matrix dudes to put a potential recruit back into the normal world. Red pill is a tracing program. I see. I understand. I watched like the first Matrix movie. I don't remember it, but I did watch it. Cole uses Discord to record all the secrets. Why? Why would he do that? I imagine doing that. Weren't the pills just her show? I don't need to know. When they've got two weeks vacation, they hurry to vacation ground. Is that a song reference? You should know that I don't know references. I don't understand when people make references to pop culture in my stream. That sounds like that seems like a song lyric. It seems like you're referencing a song there. I should ask ChatGPT. Hey ChatGPT, what song is this? Please explain this message to me. And then it will. And then it'll explain. I can understand it without context in that line. They swim and they fish. I do be fishing though. The red pill had a program. The blue pill is a sleeping pill, I just assume. But we have no way of knowing. Because he didn't take that pill, right? So we don't know what would have happened. I'm sure many people have written fiction about what happens after he takes the other pill. So, you know, what if the Matrix, what if he took the, the other pill? What if the other pill was actually the better pill? What if it was a trick the whole time? No, was he, was he, he was fooled into eating the, <laughs> taking the other pill, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. The Matrix. It's cool though. Remember never using TweetDeck? Decided to use it for once on Firefish is kind of nice. Oh, that's different though. Didn't they... Isn't TweetDeck broken now? And a clock and a widget. That's... I feel like Miski has too much going on. It's got too many widgets. They have like an RSS feed in there. Got a bunch of stuff. D-based. D-based? What about A through C based? Anyway, yeah, Mastodon by default, it used to have like a tweet back like interface until they added like a single column mode. But on my on my Ikatsu Mastodon, I disabled the single column view. I force everyone to use the tweet deck view. Give me all random features that can totally not cause my site to be, to be exploited. I saw this meme on um on a Miski instance that was like, here's all the different types of Fediverse software, and then Miski was listed as like. Is basically an operating system, but people say it's fine. It's like the Emacs. They didn't say this, but I, this is my thought. You know, like Emacs is off, often like people think of Emacs as like an operating system that happens to have a text editor. I feel like MISKEY is kind of like it's kind of like Emacs. It's like the Emacs of the Fediverse world. It's like a. It's got everything. It just happens to also have um the ability to chat and send messages to people. I made this up myself. I didn't see a post about this, but I was reminded. I was like, yeah, it sounds, it's like, it's basically Emacs. 
Do people really do that? Do what? This key wasn't even designed with activity pub in mind. Oh yeah, that is also true. It's also true. Send messages with Emacs up. I would not be surprised. I'm sure people like tweet from Emacs. They probably do all of it. So VTuber streaming with an ASCII avatar stayed longer. It was all Emacs in the front end. I mean, I saw the screenshot you posted. On the left side, it looked like Emacs Lisp. So, I'm not surprised. When you see someone using a Lisp programming language, you can assume they use Emacs. I can already tell. I tried learning Emacs once, and I was like, there's too much going on. And then I gave up. But actually, I remember when I was in college, um, that was when I was learning Vim, and th there was this one guy who was like really into Emacs, and he did all these macros and stuff like that, and he was like, yo, check this out, check out what I can do with Emacs. And he did something, he's like, wow, look at that, that's so cool, right? He, he pressed like 200 different keys to do something. And then in my mind, I was like, I can, you can do that in Vim with like three key presses. But I was just like, yo, that's so cool. I just said, yo, that's so cool. I feel like I'm warming up to Lisp. Should I give it a go? I don't know. You do what you want. I feel like if you enjoy metaprogramming, you'll probably like Lisp. I don't like it though, so <laughs> I don't. Let's see, Miski's homepage has a Vroid model. Yeah, it's, a, it's their mascot. It's like, a, it's like a cat girl. Is my school dominated by Emacs or VI users? Um, I feel like most people did not use a terminal based text editor. I, I use them though. I feel like most people just use like Notepad++ or like whatever, whatever default thing existed on Ubuntu. Oh, okay, Notepad++ was Windows. So like Eclipse, some people use Eclipse for Java. I learned a little bit of Vim. What if I did a stream where I just explain how to use Vim? My school is Vim, use Notepad++, Notepad++, Nano, that's also a thing. See, want to be able to use Lisp, but I don't know if I can muster the energy to wrap my brain around. It's too much. There's too many parentheses. It's too much. The Vim Tutor speedrun. Okay, here, here's what we'll do. Okay, we gotta catch this fish first. I could do a Vim Tutor. If, if Vim Tutor is available online in a browser, I could I could speedrun it, okay? I'll do it right now. Vim RPG. I played that, I didn't learn anything from it. I already knew. I've already knew I've already known everything. There's a website called Vim Golf actually. Where you try to get they give you an input and an output. And you have to get there in the least uh, amount of keystrokes as possible. And you learn a few things by doing that. You're like, okay, you do this thing, you see the person ahead of you did this one thing and they save like three keystrokes. And then you learn. You can press capital Z, capital Z to to save and quit. You know, most people do colon W key, WQ, enter, and then they quit. You can you can do capital Z, capital Z. Ow. Vim Golf is good, except they require you to install Ruby for some reason. See, I feel like Miss Key showing their global timeline scrolling by is doing wonders for their site. There's too there's too many messages. Okay, let's see. If do we have Vim Tutor available online? Can I can I use Vim Tutor? <laughs> Vim Tutor. Vim Tutor online. Interactive Vim tutorial. Control. That's usually Control Z, though. 
No, control Z. I mean like capital Z. It does say. Uh, but I never use it. I, I just do WQ. Oh, this isn't Ventutor. Get this out of here. I want actual Ventutor. Vim Adventures. Vim Tutor. Um, can is there like a Vim? <laughs> okay, I know. I know the Rust Playground. It uses. Um, it has a Vim mode. Config key binding Vim. Also use. Um, can I use the dark theme, please? Theme. There's so many themes on here. Uh, Twilight? That's dark, right? Okay, here's what we'll do. Vim Tutor. We will copy the text from Vim Tutor. And we will paste it into the Rust Playground. Oh, shoot. Okay. Paste. Okay, here's here's Vim Tutor, guys. <laughs> Here's, here's how you use Vim, okay? Vim is a powerful text editor. You can't see what I'm pressing. It probably doesn't even look good. What does this even look like? You can barely see what I'm doing. Can't even see this. Let's see, a social media site showing it's active is proof it's worth investing in because you feel like there's people to, to reach. It's true. Okay, so here's, um, actually, you know, I could put up, I could put up that, the window here. Let's add window capture. Game capture. Is that the same? Firefox. Capture specific window. Window Firefox. Wait, where's Firefox? It's not even showing up. Firefox. Where is it? Can I not capture? You guys know I usually don't use Windows. How do you capture specifically Firefox? <laughs> Might be better to do this on a non-VR stream. No, look, it's fine. A window. Um, okay, maybe it's not game capture. Maybe it is a window capture. I don't know why I chose game capture. Okay, Firefox. We will choose a Firefox. It has to be a window capture. Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay, so here's a thing that has Vim open. Oh. You can do this. You can do this. And crop this. Alright, we'll move this down below the chat. Is this good? <laughs> Is this good? Here, I'll do this. I'll put this here. Actually, no, you can't see it. You can't. Okay, I'll put the chat on this side. I'll put this here. Okay, so this is this is um this is Vim. <laughs> it's probably the least interesting screen. Okay, basically, this is Vim Tutor. It tells you how to use Vim. And you can use you can use the arrow keys to move, but I, you know, you get used to using H, J, K, L. You press J to go down, you press K to move up. Okay, so you just go down, right? Moving the cursor, they tell you. Here's use H, J, K, L to move. Um, using the down key, move to lesson 1.2. Okay, here's how you enter text. This, they tell you how to quit the game. I don't know why I'm calling it a game. You can uh, W, Q to save and quit. Now here's where, what you can do, okay? You go to line 84. They tell you to edit things, okay? They tell you to press X to delete something, but I say you don't need to do that, okay? They say use um, use the left and right to move to the key you want. Here's a tip. You press F, right? You start from here. You see where my cursor is? 
instead of pressing right up until you get to the C, you can press F, right? You press F, and then the next key that you press is what you jump to. So you press FC, you jump directly to the C, right? You press 0, go back to the start of the line. FC, you jump to the C, you press X to delete it. You see there's like a D over here, you press F, D, you jump to the D. FB, FR, delete that, FH, delete that, FO, delete that. Right, that is a common thing you can do. That is the most easy movement you can do. Okay, you get used to that. You can also do, um, oh shoot, where am I? <laughs> I just accidentally undid everything. Okay, you can press 84 GG to jump to the 84th line, right? Or you could press 84 capital G to jump to the 84th line. It's a common thing to do. Okay, so F will jump to the character. If you want to jump to the character before that letter, you can press T, okay? Earlier, I was pressing F and then C to jump to C. You can press F, sorry, you can press T to jump to, jump to the C. You press T, C, you jump to the thing right before the first C. And that is a common thing. So we're gonna do the same thing. You press T, do that, F, E, do that. And you could just, you know, just do this. This is the tutorial, they teach you how to do things. I'm teaching you stuff that the tutorial isn't even telling you to do. Okay, and then here. This one, they tell you to um, edit this line so that it has the same text as this. You could do that. You could also just press YY to copy the whole line. You can press P to paste the whole line and then d delete this one. You could do that. That's kind of cheating though, so don't do that, um, but you could. Okay, so here's what you do, okay? You want to update this first line to be the same as this line. Yeah, yanking and putting. Um, so we can do the same thing, right? You say, you see what's different here? You press FT to jump here. You press I to go into insert mode. You type sum, you put space, you press escape, and then you just, like, you just edit the rest of it as usual, right? And then you say, you go to this one from... Go to the dot, do that, right? It's easy. Cheating, it's an any percent, guys. It's fine. So they have a summary, they explain. You can save and quit if you want. And then here they teach you to delete, okay? They're like, there's some words that don't belong in this sentence, and they're like, okay, delete some words, okay? You go to, okay, which words don't, don't shouldn't be there? A, you know, there are some word. You can do DW to delete a word. Wait, DW. Actually, here's the thing you can do in Vim. You press W to move to the next word. Right, you could do that. Um, you could press 2W to move two words ahead. You can press 3W to move three words ahead. So this one, they just want you to delete text that should not be there. There are some words that don't belong here. So you go to F, you delete that one. Delete that word, look at the word paper, delete that one. And suddenly you have a sentence that makes sense. There are some words that don't belong in this sentence. Wait, that's fine. Then they teach you more deletion commands. You can use, um, yeah, the dollar sign can bring you to the end of the line. Most people, you can press the home and end keys also, but in Vim, you can press zero to go to the start of the line, dollar sign to go to the end of the line. So what they want you to do here is to go to the dot, delete until the end of the line. Here's a pro tip, guys. They tell, they tell you you can do D dollar sign. You can also do capital D. It does the same thing. Capital D, delete until the end of the line. This is basically the same thing. Pro tip. That's how you do it. Or you could do D, D dollar sign. Um, so Vim has movements. So when you press D, it, you see how this cursor turned into like a blinking thing? It's like a pending delete. It'll delete until the next thing that you move the cursor to. So if you press D and you press W, it'll delete the word. If you press D and then we do the same thing we were doing earlier, you could do like F to, to the T, right? You want to delete until the T. You can do D, F, T. It'll delete up to, it'll delete up to this T, including the T, guys. So there's pro tips for you. You could delete, if you want to delete until the T, DTT, right? Look at that, pro tip, easy. If you want to delete and also enter um, insert mode, you can do um, C instead, right? 
they teach you to do D dollar sign, you can do C dollar sign. C is to change. C dollar sign, and then suddenly you're in terminal, you can type stuff. Here it is. Didn't know about F, just spam W like I'm sitting in grass. Yeah, it's a pro tip. F is good, F and T, those are the pro strats. I don't know if they even teach you this stuff in VimTutor. Uh, commands and objects, yeah, okay, I just explained this. D object is to delete, right? Delete until the next movement. Anyway, I'm sure this is interesting for some people. Uh, you can type D, D to delete a whole line, that is true, you can do that. So they want you to delete some lines from here, right? Roses are red, you can delete this. Here's what I do usually. Instead of doing DD, that's fine, right? I usually do visual selection. You can press capital V to select the whole line, and it makes it more obvious what you're about to delete or update. So if I want to delete a line, if I want to delete multiple lines, capital V, do this, press D to delete it. Um, if you just want to delete one line, DD is fine. An interesting thing to note about um, deleting is that it puts it in your, your paste buffer or whatever it's called. So if you delete a line, if you want to move a line around, you could just delete it and then press P to move it somewhere else. It's a very, very common move. If you want to delete a whole block of text and like put it up here, you can do that. With visual select. Yeah, visual is nice. Uh, roses are red, delete that one. Delete these ones. And now you have a poem that rhymes and makes sense. Okay, and then there's undo. You can just press U to undo. Right, they want you to fix these errors. Is there a delete that doesn't put into your buffer? Um, you can delete, you can specify another buffer that you want. So there's a quote. I think, I think the quote button. Oops. If I want to delete, I forget the exact thing. Is it D quote? I usually don't do it that often, so I forget. It's like, it's like muscle memory. If I want to do it, I usually do something. I forget what keys I press. But there's a way to specify a, a buffer that isn't the, the default buffer. There's an underscore buffer? I did not know that. Um, okay, so we learned some things here. What, how do you delete into a different buffer? Is quote underscore D? Yeah. Yeah, and then if you paste that, okay, true. Okay, we learned something today. You can you can do that. It's good to know. I didn't know this. I got some experts in chat. Okay, so they want you to fix these errors, and then just um, undo it. Oops. Do this and then you press U to undo. That's it. And then the next one, lesson two summary. We've done this. The put command. Yeah, P to paste. You can delete. Delete and paste. Put this here. You put this there. Put that there. Replace command. What is the replace command? Press R. Oh yeah, R you can replace the current character. So like usually what you would do here. And you would press like you would delete the M and then you would insert and then type something else. If you want to replace a, a specific character, is there a redo? There's it's a capital R. Use U for undo, capital R for redo. I think. Yes, it is capital R. Okay, so this one, they teach you to um, delete a single character, replace a single character. Okay, so here, if you want to replace this U with a, a Y, you press R to replace, you press Y, and put that in there. You do that, do this, do that. It's easy. The change command, okay, see, I explained, I explained the change command earlier. This is if you want to delete and also enter um, insert mode. So you can C, W to change the rest of the word. You start typing words. 
I usually do CIW, guys. Uh, CIW is a change in word. This is one of the most useful movements you can learn. If your cursor is here and you want to replace the whole word, you do CIW for change in word. It'll replace the whole word. Hey, if you just retype it. You do the same thing for like DIW. If you want to delete the current word without like needing to go to the start of the word, you can do DIW to delete the whole word. Um, so that's good. You know, I usually use that one really often. More changes using C. What is this? C dollar sign to go to the end of the line? Yeah, you could do that. Or you could do C. Capital C does the same thing. Right, just type the rest of this. The C dollar sign? No, I'll do the capital C command. Right, you can do that. That's fine. Lesson 3 summary. I'm sure some people are watching this and they're like, what's the point? I could just like click and like, I could just click and just type. What's the point of doing this? Well, there's, um, there's cool things you can do. They have macros as well. You guys know about Vim macros? It's convenient. You can do visual selection and insertions. I don't think the tutorial covers any of this stuff. But you know, if you want to do like, you do capital V. Or you do, what is it, control V? Control V, you type a bunch of stuff. You could do that. Look at that. It's nice, right? You can do visual selection. Control V to select a block of text. You press X, and then you could like paste it somewhere else, right? You could do this. Check that out. I was told of macros, but my professor was a Vim wizard. Macros are basically you just copy stuff, right? You could do. Here's an example, okay? Let's say, okay, you can also. Here's a tip. You can press Control A to increment the number. But you see how this thing says one? You're like, man, I wish I could I wish this could be two instead. Control A is now a two. Right? Control X to 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 decrease, it becomes a zero. So here's a thing you can do here. If you want to do a macro, you can you can let's say you want to increase all of these numbers, right? You have one, two, three, four. What if you wanted this to be like I don't know, like um increment all these numbers by two. You start a macro, you press Q, you choose where you want to save it. You press A, okay? On the bottom here you see it says recording at A. You've started recording a macro. So then you just start typing stuff, right? You start, you know, you press Control A twice. Now it's a 3. Now you move to the next line. You do this. Now you press Q to unrecord your macro. And then you can press at A to redo the macro. You see this too? It's going to become a four. You, you do it again. This five and a six. Right, that's, a, that's a cool thing you can do with a macro. Just repeat common movements. And uh, you end up doing, if, if you have like edit code a lot, right? Let's say, for example, you had, here's a common thing that shows up. If you have like a struct in Rust, right? Um, and you have like a bunch of fields, right? A is a U32, B is a U32, C is a U32, right? And let's say you want to update all of these to be options, right? Um, you could you could just do this, right? You could just do this, right? That that's an easy way to do it. However, uh, let's say you have something more complicated, like. Um, you know, this thing is a string, and this thing is like um, a U size or whatever. You could do this, right? This is fine. But then once you get here, it's like, oh, what do I do now? I can't, I can't do that. You could, you could record a macro, right? You do QA. You go, you find the quote. Or you find the the colon. You do this. You do option. You find the comma, and then you go to the next line. You unrecord the macro. Then you press it twice. And now suddenly you you change everything into an option. Okay, it's an easy thing to do. You know, macros are cool. Also, welcome to Yurga. I probably saved hours by doing stuff like this. Um, if I had like a real programming problem, I could probably explain some cool uses <laughs> for macros. Or let's say like I don't know what, what's a common thing you can do. Some something like really repetitive. You can do that, um, record macros and do stuff like that. Anyway, this stream is so specific. This is like the most specific stream. 
it's like half the audience is like, what the frick is he talking about? The other half is like, yo, what the? I didn't know you could do that. Uh, you can search. Oh, if you want to, yeah, if you... So search is also a movement. So if you want to delete, right? Let's say you want to start from this line and you want to delete until like the next arrow. You could press D and then you could press, um, start searching that. And suddenly, you know, your cursor was here. You do a search, right? D search dash dash dash. It'll match that. Once you press enter, it'll delete from your current cursor up until whatever you search for. So you can do that. Yeah, search is a movement. Same thing for N. If you want to repeat a search, okay, they, I don't know if they explain this here. If you are searching for stuff, you can type like, you know, you search for the word in, you press N to repeat again. Let's say you want to delete from this in until the next in. Right? You go here, D, N. It'll delete until the next occurrence of your search. So, yeah, lecture notes. Code golf. How do I implement Copilot? I don't even know. You gotta use GitHub for that. Uh, matching parentheses, search, whatever. Oh yeah, you can you can use the um, the percent symbol. So if you have a parentheses here, you want to find the matching parentheses. You press the percent symbol. Right, this it jumps between them. You go to this one. You know, it jumps to that one. Go to here, jumps to there. You could easily do that. I do things like CI parentheses a lot. Yeah, that's also true. You do DI parentheses to delete within the parentheses. Um, you delete in here. It's a common movement. Headset power is low. Okay, I'll turn, I'm gonna turn on my plug in my. They tend to use an S search G. Yeah, you can you can do that as well. Okay, um, way to change errors. Yeah, this teaches you how to find and replace stuff. We do percent %s. Yeah, so percent %s will find and replace in the whole file. If you want to change like stuff, here's where visual select is useful. Let's say you want to replace, find and replace stuff, but like not in the whole file. You can select a range, right? Select a range, and then once you do colon, right, you see how it doesn't say percent %s here? The percent just means apply to the whole file. If you've done a visual selection and you do colon, it'll put this thing in here. And you're like, what the heck is that? This is um, a selection that refers to your range, and then you do like S here. And then you type, you know, you want to replace the word the with the um, hello, right? G, do that. Now it only replaces the hello within what I've selected. And yeah, that's useful. You could do that. Uh, lesson four, get this. How to execute an external command. Yeah, you could do, you could read input from an external file if you want. You do like R exclamation mark something. I don't use this that often, but there have been times when it's useful. Uh, unfortunately, I can't demonstrate this here because we're not actually in Vim. This is uh, <laughs> this is the Rust playground, which happens to have a Vim editor. You can write files. Yeah, you can save to a different file. You can um... oh, you can save part of a file. I guess I didn't know you could do that, but I, I've never done it. You can retrieve and merge files. Okay, I, I never do this stuff. I've never needed to. But you can write parts of files. Yeah, exclamation mark make. Well, there's yeah, there's exclamation exclamation mark make to to run a command. But if we do R and then exclamation mark, it'll read the output of the command and put it into your buffer. The open command. I can't demonstrate this stuff because I'm not in actual Vim. Type A to insert text after the cursor. Yeah, it's basically like insert mode except after the cursor. Um, here's the thing you can do with A though. If you visual select, you can type, you can append. If you do capital A, okay, here's the thing. If you press A, it'll append to where your cursor is. If you do capital A, it'll jump to the end of the line and then insert. So that is pretty useful sometimes. You don't have to like manually jump. 
you know, with the dollar sign. Just press capital A to start typing at the end of the line. If you do a, um, a block selection and you do capital A, actually no, it, does, it doesn't work. Does this work? Okay, I guess it doesn't work. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> Another version to replace, uh, capital R. Wait, I never do this. I never use capital R. What is this? Um, capital R to replace more than one character. Move the cursor to the first line. Place R. Oh, no, I do I do this sometimes. Yeah. If you want to replace um, <laughs> a lot of things, let's say you do this, right? You can replace this with um, that. You can do that. Set option, um, this this is a bit... Okay, this is teaching about Vim settings. To do some of that stuff. Typing O opens a line below. Oh yeah, this is pretty common. Uh, if you're on a current line and you want to insert a line afterwards, just press O. It'll do it pretty easily. Right, you don't have to like enter insert mode and then press enter a bunch of times. You can just press O. You can press capital O to open a line uh, before your current line. That happens pretty often. And here's they teach you how to use help. They teach you how to use a uh, VimRC. And that's that's the entirety of VimTutor. There's a lot of stuff they didn't teach you about. They didn't teach you about the the T or like or F. I feel like that's one of the most powerful movements you can do. But anyway, I spent enough time on this um, <laughs> and get back to talking about stuff that does not alienate half of chat. What does he do? It's the same as F, except it jumps to the character before. So it's useful if you don't want to jump directly to the, the character, you want to jump before it. But yeah, that's um, that's some basics of Vim. Set no compatible in VimRC to use arrow keys. I, yeah, I, I don't use arrow keys. I think it's it's nicer if you don't use them. But I, I can see how if you were starting out, you use arrow keys. I specifically turn off arrow keys to force myself to use HJKL because. It's like it's kind of annoying have to reach over to the the dash or to the, to the arrow sometimes. Find arrow keys to deleting your whole file. You could also do that. I just disabled arrow keys. Still can't get used. To. It takes a while to get used to. It's hard because like if you need to code, like if you need to do actual work, it it's a bit counterproductive to like spend all your time in this editor that you don't even really know how to use. But thankfully, when I was learning Vim, when I was learning Vim, I was like in college, and I had plenty of free time to just, you know, <laughs> I just write out a project using Vim. Um, if you're like being paid to to do stuff at your job, they probably will be like, please just use an editor that you know how to use. Thinking of moving HJKL to JKL. Why? <laughs> I think it's I think it's good to learn the proper proper way. I don't know. Maybe if it works for you, that's that's the thing though. If it works for you, you can do it. Um, you can use. Did I mention what semicolon does? I feel like I use semicolon all the time, but I've if I were to explain what it does, I don't remember. What does what does semicolon do? Um, <laughs> Do I use semicolon? I feel like I use semicolon. I'm gonna look it up. Vim semicolon. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, okay. I forgot, I forgot to explain this. I think I was doing this subconsciously and I forgot to explain it. Semicolon repeats the command. So if you do like a, like an F or a T to search for the next character, you don't have to keep typing it. You can just repeat it. Okay, here's what you do. Okay, let's say I'm here. I want to jump to to this M, right? Or no, let's say I want to jump to this M. This M right here. And instead of... Like, if I just press F and then M, it'll jump to this M, which is not what I want. 
I can repeat it again by pressing FM again, and then it'll jump to this one. But instead of doing that, you can just press um, semicolon, and it'll jump. It'll repeat the previous F or T movement. And that is pretty useful a lot of the time. Play Dungeon Crawl, Stone Soup, use HVKL for movement. Yeah, you could do that. You could do that. What are some other things we can do? There's a lot of, a lot of cool stuff you can do in Vim. Actually, does Vim Golf have a version that doesn't require you to install Ruby? <laughs> nope, okay, they still have not modernized. They also require like a Twitter login, which is kind of messed up. My issue is that I first have to move my hand from JKL to HJKL. Wait, what? What's wrong with H though? I think it's fine. Alright, well, um, that's, that's Vim. I'm sure if I had other stuff that is useful. I'm gonna run. I'm gonna write some Rust, guys. Check this out. Could, uh. Yo, look at this. It has printed. It has printed the text. All right. <laughs> uh, welcome, good cat game. Cargo, cargo space. Car cargo, cargo road. All right. Let's see. Uh, where is my index finger when I type? It's on the home row. Let's see. When I'm typing. My index finger by default is on um, J. J. If you look at your keyboard, um, I think the F and J characters have they have actual there's like special indentations on them. That is where your index finger should be. Mine is on J as well. Well, I don't know. It's it's been normal for me. I feel like down left is common. I don't know. Home row typing is nice. That's why HJKL is so much better than arrow keys. Because it's like it's faster. You don't have to move your hands, you know? It's like you're already typing here. If you want to move, you'd have to like go here, and that's weird. You don't need to use H to move that off in either, anyways. Um, that's also true. Because I feel like most of the time, you're starting at the start of the line, and you're more often moving to the right with, with L. It's true. What's the difference between VI, Vim and VI and VeoVim and Emacs? Uh, VI is like the old version. It doesn't support as many undos. There's not as many um, customization options. Most people, when they say VI, they mean Vim. Most distros, they have an alias for VI that goes to Vim. Neo Vim is basically, it's like Vim, but with, um, it has scripting via Lua instead of VimScript. I mean, it supports VimScript as well, but you can write your, your scripts in Lua, which is nice. It has um, async. Well, Vim has async as well, but it wasn't until NeoVim added it that at some point they, they added it back to, to Vim. If I need to go back, I'd be more likely to use B. That is also true. Or I'll press zero. What's the difference between Bash and Lua? Uh, Bash is this is it's totally different. They're so different that it's hard to answer this question because there's a lot of differences. Lua is an embedded scripting language, so basically you can have like. You could use it to configure, like, in a lot of games they use Lua for scripting, like, you know, you have your custom plugin and stuff like that. 
those are usually Lua. Bash is specifically for like invoking command line tools and stuff like that. Usually. And so they are very different. So I don't really know how to answer that question. Yeah, Bash is the default scripting language of the Bash shell. Yeah, the born again shell. You guys know Bash means born again shell. Like Jason Bourne. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, what are some other... You know, like, I, I use Vim all the time. I don't know how to... I'm sure there's, like, other stuff that comes up. Macros is one of the most useful ones. I use macros constantly, like, all the time. The thing is, if you, if you use macros, you should set... You should set lazy redraw to on. Look it up, guys. Lazy... Lazy redraw. <laughs> If you if you use macros, you should turn that off or turn that on, because otherwise it'll it'll keep it'll play all of your your macros like one keystroke at a time, and it's kind of slow. Yeah, capital F. Yeah, you can press capital F and then a letter to go back. And yeah, what else is there? I'm sure if I like were to code something, I probably could. A change in word is a common thing. Am I feeling sick? Um, no. But I'm sure this is an indication that my voice sounds different. Probably. But no, I, I don't feel sick. Seem like I'm out of breath. That may also be true. So I think when I was doing that, when I was doing that, um, that Vim tutorial, you know, I was I was like talking a bunch. It was like non-stop talking. It was like, oh, here's you do this. You press you press F, and then you press this thing, and then you press uh, parentheses, and then you press this other thing, and then blah blah blah. So maybe that's why. Also, I should be I should be in night mode. Yeah, not sick. It's good though. It's good that I'm not sick. I could recommend being sick or not sick. I would recommend not being sick. Because being sick is not even good. Most of the time, it's not even good. And here we are. We spent like what, like half an hour talking about Vim for like 40 minutes. And you guys learn stuff, possibly. Now it's nighttime. And soon it'll be time for me to hydrate. Fast paced game commentary. Yeah. Out here gaming. Can I make a full rust stack? What does that mean? What do you mean by this? You mean like use Rust on the back end and the front end? You sure can. You sure can. There's WebAssembly. There's front end Rust libraries. I don't know if I would recommend it though. But you could. If I were doing front end, I would probably just use um, React or whatever. No, you still need to use JavaScript. Unfortunately, like to interact with WebAssembly, you still need some JavaScript. Including hardware design. Yeah, full, full stack, including the browser, including the computer that it runs on, including all the, the microchips. Lane. Well, that's just how it is. You can't use WebAssembly without some JavaScript. Anyway, I guess I'll hydrate now. I know it's like, you know, no, actually it's, it's perfectly on time. Okay, we're gonna hydrate.
Okay. I have successfully hydrated. Anyway, um, if you guys want to see my Vim config, I do have that. It's on GitHub. Wolfie. It's actually in my Nix config. GitHub.com slash Wolfie slash Nix config. It's in modules. NeoVim, and I have, I've got a bunch of Lua script in here, I've got some, uh, some Nix where I define all my plugins, you know, I got this plugin, at some point recently I converted all this stuff from Vim script to Lua, which was nice, have my language server settings in here, you know, you can check it out, you could feel free to check out this stuff. It might be confusing because it's not um, it's not really the typical Vim setup because I have this running via via Nix. What I use for language server? Um, the built-in <coughs> sorry, the, the built-in NeoVim language server. NeoVim has a, has an LSP. And I use that. Um, define a few things here. All of these things are provided by Nix, which may be confusing for some people. But it works for me. It's easy it's easy for me to set up. I don't I don't know about you guys. This might this might be very confusing if you have not if you've not seen Home Manager. But for me I just need to like <clears throat> if I get a new computer I just install Nix and then I install this Nix config and then all of my settings are there. That's fine. I have all my programs. I don't need to like man manually install a bunch of stuff. Yeah, when I get a work computer, I just add a new config here and then suddenly I have all of my all of my stuff. And it's cool. It's neat. Yeah, including my plugins. All the plugins, all of my commands, you know, Rust gets installed, um, all of my CLI tools. This guy's work for a startup? Yes, but I, I was doing this stuff before I was in a startup. Your friend has been talking about GUIX. I've heard about that, but I don't think it's, it's like not as well known as Nix, right? Anyway, um, yeah, that's, um, that's it. That's all. Anyway, what else is going on? What's going on in the world? We've talked about a bunch of stuff. We have talked about Hololive. We talked about Miski. We talked about Twitter. Give me Oscar Nixon. It's up there. I, I literally linked it. It's my entire repository of knowledge. Config language is a Lisp dialect. For GUIX? I mean, why they gotta do this? Uh, so many parentheses. It's a repository. You guys don't knowledge. You guys have knowledge. It's cool though. It's cool to code things. Yeah, Francis Bacon. Exactly. He knows. Yogi King. He knows. Knowledge is power. France is bacon. But what was he baking though? What was France even bacon? We simply do not know. We should release some fish. You know, it is catch and release. And now we sell these fish. $52 for that. 
I don't know how to Lua either. Lua is pretty straightforward. The weird thing about Lua is that um, arrays and objects are the same. Like a like an array in Lua is just an object. It's kind of weird. Why don't more people script in Python? What do you mean? That's like the most common scripting language. I feel like most people, when they think of scripting, Python is like the most common option. Do you have to be strict with the type? For Lua? I don't, yeah, also Lua starts at 1. It's weird. More people? There's already a lot of people. I don't think Lua has that many types. It has like objects. It's got strings. It's got numbers. It's one of the, I, th I think it's one of those languages where like numbers are always floating point. Also, welcome, props not Jack. Lua is the most used of Visual Basic style languages. MATLAB. Haven't used MATLAB in so long. You guys use MATLAB? It was annoying. Like when I was in college and we had to use MATLAB, you could we could not use that at home because we didn't have like a, like a personal license, and so we would need to like SSH into like um, one of the machines at school and then install like an X server and then run MATLAB from there. <laughs> it was kind of weird. Yeah, MATLAB's only used in academia. Sage Math. I think there's also there's also another one, right? I forget what it was called. But there's like an open source kind of like MATLAB. Oh yeah, Octave. Yeah, Octave. Um it wasn't exactly compatible though. There's like a lot of stuff you could not do that MATLAB could do. Sage math. I don't know. Julia? The missing signal processing libraries, I couldn't use it. That probably was one of the... <laughs> yeah, that probably was one of the things that I needed. Digital signal processing stuff. I don't know, I'm sure it's better now. It's probably slightly better now. But I did not enjoy MATLAB at all because it was not that cool. What do people use? Like, so if people mostly use MATLAB in academia, like, what do people use, like, in the industry, like, in the real engineering industry? Python. They use Python. Do they use um I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what else people use. Yeah, Python. And nothing else. Literally just Python. It's like if you if you need to use like any sort of AI machine learning stuff, it's always in Python. And when I mean Python, I mean like a C library that someone wrote and then they wrapped it in Python. I feel like most use cases of Python for like scientific stuff is mostly just like wrappers around C libraries. Some specific instrumentation files, drivers for it probably only exist in MATLAB or C. Man. Spend 20k a year on MATLAB? How, how is MATLAB so expensive? It's like... It's so pricey. And for what? And for what? 
It's academia. Yeah, Zoe is in school. So it is academia. Like, no one uses MATLAB everywhere else, right? Once you leave school, it's like, who even needs MATLAB? So that's, that's the past. You don't need that. You don't need MATLAB to tell you what to do. You don't need big MATLAB to sell you licenses. 20k. Academia costs money. But what about student loans? What are the students paying for? What are they, what are they even doing out there? I don't even know. Anyway, I don't know. What were we talking about? <laughs> what were we talking about besides my life? I don't even remember. Whoa, lightning? It's a learning experience. Yeah, debt. Student debt. MATLAB license was make it free for every student. Pay 20k to make it free for everyone. It's 200k total? Damn. Well, how long does the license last? I guess if you have like, if your costs are more than 200k, then I guess it's worth it. Yearly? <laughs> 200k per year? That's what is that's like one senior software engineer at a big tech company. That's fine, they can afford that. In industry they use all the free stuff. Yeah, because it's like it's money. Gotta save that money. How did we get to this topic? I don't even remember. What are we talking about? Oh, we were talking about scripting, right? We are talking about Lua. You know, scripting languages. Those were the days. You guys remember that? Remember when we were talking about scripting? Lua. Good times. Explaining how to land a big tech dub. I was not, though. I was not at all. Julia is popular as well. I've never seen anyone use it. But then again, I'm also not in the industry. So I don't know. Friend is going to do GUIX for sure. But why that instead of Nix? I feel like the, the packages that are available on, on GUIX are, are much more limited. And I think they don't do, they don't include closed source stuff. So there's like a bunch of stuff where it's like, if it's proprietary, you literally can't, literally can't get it. Scripting and the storyboarding. Yeah. What about that writer strike, huh? Why don't you guys see that writer strike? You guys see that UPS strike? Is that because I'm in between being in the industry? No, I mean like the... We're talking about like the academic community. Or like the community that cares about processing matrices and MATLAB and stuff like that. It's a separate repo for closer. Okay, I didn't know that. I had no idea. NVIDIA drivers? What are they even driving to? Where are those drivers even going? Why strike when spare? Uh, that's, a, that's, a, uh, that's a bowling joke, right? That's a bowling joke. I get it. Also, welcome Marklar. 
showing my solidarity by not writing anything significant. So true. Imagine writing. Imagine writing a thing. Go on Twitter, you start writing stuff. Debian? Debian? Is it pronounced Debian or Debian? I think it's Debian, right? Arch was easier to install than Debian. What? Well, I guess it's easier, but then once you have to fix stuff, it's like it's kind of hard. Friend was going to Arch plus GUIX on top. If I had to use a Linux now, I would try out NixOS. And then I'd be like, this is too hard. And then I would install probably like Ubuntu with Nix on top. Just so I don't have to do a lot of stuff. Once you have to fix stuff, Arch is easier. I guess it is more flexible. Right, with like with Debian, it's like if your package is not installed, it's not part of the the long-term support release. You gotta do like a ton of stuff. And that's annoying. Imagine having to do stuff. Literally could not be me. Well, I don't have to think about that though. Don't have to... Haven't used Linux as my primary OS in so long. It is kind of nice being on Mac though, you know? Things just work a lot of the time. I did run into this thing where like... Since I, I rarely ever update my OS, um, my Mac OS version is probably like three major versions behind. And so I ran into this thing where I tried to update my Nix packages. And the terminal that I use um, was not compatible with my version of Mac OS. And so at some point I'm going to have to update. And I'm sure it's going to break a bunch of stuff. And I don't want to do that. But eventually I will have to. <laughs> I'm like so far back. Things work unless you run against the grain, then you wish you weren't on Mac OS. Possibly true. But I don't run into that that often. Peter's so old they can run Oregon Trail. No. Well, yeah, every can't every computer run that game? It's on Steam. They remade that game on Steam. Yeah, plug and play. Well, at some point I'm going to update my, my Mac OS to the latest version. And if my stream stops working um, and I can't stream, that's probably why. I'll be like, man, I need to update my OS. And then like some OBS thing broke. <laughs> Might as well do it sooner. I'll probably do it on the weekend. You know, maybe on Sunday. Maybe I will do it on Sunday. The thing is though, sometimes if you, if you, um, if you upgrade your Mac OS, it deletes your Nix, um, your Nix store. But I mean, it's pretty easy to reinstall. It's just a bit annoying. Didn't you never expected Mac OS version current year? VTube Studio breaks? That is, that could also happen. Nothing worse than being locked out of updates because you're too far behind. No, it's fine. Everything is perfectly fine. Here, that makes me have so many emotions. Oh, it deleting your mix store? It's fine because all of that stuff is easily recreatable. It doesn't delete like your personal like settings. It's just like you just have to re-download everything from the cache. It's not a big deal. It's perfectly fine. It's only an issue because Nix installs stuff to like um, a root Nix directory and Mac OS in uh, recent versions. They don't allow you to have anything there unless you have like this specific setup. Um, and so I guess they just, they just wipes it every time. 
It's fine. It's just it's just a minor inconvenience. Anyway, um what else is there? Nothing. I got the recruiter yesterday. I was talking about yesterday. Um recruiter from TikTok was like, hey, we have this position you might be interested in. I look I took a look at it. It is it does not interest me at all. I think it's like an in-office position and also it's not in New York. I've gotten recruiters contacting me like, hey, you might be interested in this one. And then I look at the job listing and it's like it's like in Cal it's like in California. And I'm like, I'm not even there. I'm not even in California. Yeah, Nyx is really easy to reinstall. And I asked him if he can work remotely, but like I don't even want to work there. I think the the job listing was not that interesting to me. Yeah, you have a complete overview. Exactly. You have everything configured. You set up a new computer. You can just uh, just install from scratch. What makes an interesting listing? Well, for me, I'm just looking for Rust stuff for now. That's primarily it. If it lists Rust and it's likely that I'll be able to write some Rust code while I'm there, it's interesting to me. At least for now. I wish we could track every install and write it to a file. Probably does. I'm sure it does. It probably has a log. There's probably a command you can run to see everything you've installed. I know um, on Mac, people use Homebrew to install stuff. There's a way to list all the packages you've installed. And yeah. That's it. It's cool though, you know, developer productivity. It's nice to be productive as a developer. Let's see, is anything, has anything else of interest happened to me recently? Oh, I had, remember when I was at my previous, previous job? And, uh... I conducted an interview with some guy, and he, um... He was really impressed by my knowledge, and then he add, he tried to add me on this Microsoft messaging app that I didn't even know existed. Microsoft Kaizawa. Well, he contacted me again on LinkedIn. He was like, hey, I know we never actually worked together, but I was, I was really impressed by the uh, that interview. He still remembers that interview. He's like, I know we don't, we never worked together. <laughs> Would love to connect though. Also, do you know this guy? He used to work at this company. I have some questions about the code base and I did not respond. He wanted to be my friend, but I left. Yeah, imagine though. Also, welcome, Effie. Imagine like, um, you know, you, you have an interviewer and you're impressed and you're like, wow, I would love working at this company. This guy seems cool. And then you join the company and the guy has left. Yeah, Microsoft Kaizala. K-A-I-Z-A-L-A or something. Networking. Yeah, I was interviewing him. The next time the job comes up, it will come my way 100%. They left. Wait, what? <laughs> oh no, yeah, I was the person at the company and he wanted to join the company. And then I left the company after he accepted. Yeah. <laughs> well, it wasn't because it was because I was planning on leaving anyway. But I felt bad because it's like, man, this guy—he seemed so interested in learning. I'm sure he joined. It's like, oh, where's where's this guy who interviewed me? I remember because like, he would bring up like you know like in an interview, you do an interview, you interview with the next person, and then they ask you sometimes how your previous interview went. 
I feel like every other person he talked to after me, he was, he mentioned like, oh yeah, this guy was really cool. I love talking to this guy. Really, really was impressive. And during the interview feedback, they all mentioned like this guy. <laughs> he kept talking about you, and it's like, what? I didn't even do anything. Also, welcome Nano Dan. Haven't napped yet, yo. You should tune in to when I was talking about Vim. That's like the optimal time to nap. What if they're watching this stream right now? Had a similar experience. Person interviewed me, got accepted, started during summer. Person I interviewed wasn't there. Yeah, I feel like that's probably common. Like sometimes when I want to join a company, I kind of want to ask like, what don't you like about the company? Because like when I was interviewing people and they wanted to join, I wanted to say like, you probably don't want to join because things are th things kind of suck right now at this company. <laughs> but like, I, I didn't want to just say that, right? And also they might have told my, the other people that they interviewed, right? They could have been like, um, this guy I talked to who work here, he said uh, the company is kind of going downhill and he's going to leave anyway, so I think I'm going to not join, <laughs> right? I don't want that to happen. But I also kind of like, I kind of want to be like, Hey, if you value, like, your time, maybe you don't work here. But you can't. You can't say that. And when I interview ad companies as a candidate, I'm like, I kind of want to be like, Hey, you know, just, just between you and me, is there any reason I shouldn't join this company? <laughs> is there any reason you can think of? Like, are you going to leave in the next few months? Yeah, this guy. See, that happened to me as an intern. I interviewed with a guy who I thought I could learn a lot from. They put me in the corner to waste time until my internship ended. That sucks. That's bad. But anyway, that guy, that guy who um, I interviewed, he's actually still at the company. So I guess he still is fine with it. He doesn't hate it, at least. But I think a lot of the smart people that were at that company ended up leaving, like, you know? <laughs> so I don't know what he could learn from us. You can rephrase it, something like, what big ticket item do you think the company could do to improve the most? Yeah, that, wait, I could do that. I could, I could be like, yeah, what are some... Well, I don't know, I don't know, like, how to phrase it. What are some things that you would like to see the company do better at. Maybe. <laughs> or you could just ask like, you know, what are, what are some things that surprise you about the company when you join? I mean, usually they mention positive things, but like, what if they mention negative things? It could be like, oh yeah, it surprised me that they don't have, uh, they don't do this stuff. About like to see or are currently doing. What are some what are some things you would like to see the company do and get to, to do? What what would you like to see? As far what what sucks about the company? Tell me right now. What is the worst part about the company? What is the worst thing your boss ever did? I feel like it must be really awkward if, if you got asked that at, in an interview. Like by the candidate. If the candidate asks you like, yeah, what sucks about him? <laughs> What's the worst part about your company? I feel like I might have asked that at some point to like one company. I might have asked like, I ask, what are some things you like about the company and what are some things you don't like? Right, then they can give like a balanced approach. Yeah, what sucks about uh, the vacuum company? Oh yeah, these new, these new vacuums we're designing, they suck. You could say, yo, that's so cool. That's what they should do. They do tend to do that. That's how you can tell they're doing things right. 
If their vacuum cleaners do not suck, then they're doing it wrong. So thank you for telling me. The Dyson batteries suck. Do they? Yeah, the cordless vacuum, it doesn't last that long. Maybe like half an hour, for like 40 minutes. But I feel like that's good enough, right? That, that's enough time to suction things. The dolphin emulator, what? These two packages will never not be funny. What's funny? What's so funny about that? Dolphin? Oh, is that like some other program that's not the emulator? Have less than a minute of suction. What the? Yeah, my my Dyson cordless vacuum still it still lasts for at least thirty minutes. I use it about once a week. Oh, the file manager, right? Right. That's cool. On quieter vacuums. I feel like vacuum loudness has never really been an issue for me. They're loud for arguably no reason, but they're sucking things. How can you have quiet vacuums? Wait a second, when you're in space, right? They say space is a vacuum, and yet they can't hear you scream in space because it's so quiet. But like, then why are vacuum cleaners loud, huh? Explain this, science. If space is quiet and it's a vacuum, then why are vacuum cleaners loud? Checkmate. Some vacuum cleaners are designed with a bad motor that is louder. Oh. I did not know that. Scientists, yeah, vacuums. What's the deal, huh? What's the deal with this? Don't want to know the answer. No, I, we already know. Vacuum cleaners are not the same as vacuums. The space vacuums. Your quietest vacuum. How quiet is it? What is the quietest vacuum? But how can you tell if they're working? What if you what if what if vacuums are so quiet that you can't tell if they're working? I mean you could see the thing spin around. It's kind of like how um, when you do phone calls, right? I think with phone calls they can have the background be totally quiet, but then people thought that was weird. So they started artificially introducing white noise into into phone calls. That's a thing. It's real. Quietest vacuum is silence. Space smells like burned meat. I wonder why that is. Why is that? Is it is it all the the things burning in the atmosphere? How do you know a silent PC is on? There's no way. There's literally no way. At 24 FPS. They all have nose cancer. No, it's gotta be all the things are burning in the atmosphere. They are the burnt meat? Whoa. The astronauts? It really makes you think, huh? It really makes you think that maybe they are the thing that they smell. You ever think about how like when you smell things, you're like you're smelling the inside of your nose like all the time. Right? What if the thing that you smell is not actually like 
what it normally smells like. Okay, what if you can smell things without smelling the inside of your nose? What's the deal with that? What's up with that, guys? Let's see, RuneScape trolls are named after the first thing they eat. The head chef is called burnt meat. Wouldn't a lot of them have the same names? The VX8 Oko X Silence. What the? Oh god, cookie policy. German language. I can't read this. I don't know what they're asking me. Cookies? Sure. <laughs> The re comma. Oh, you guys use commas for for um for decimals there. The re comma five liter instead of three dot five. The troll call troll. Do you guys use um a period for like when you do like you know like three thousand three dot zero zero zero? It's wild. What the? Why is that? Also, my arm, drunken dwarf's leg, don't know what. Oh, those trolls. Now, how do they know the name of it, though? Do their parents name them? Like, they don't name themselves, right? What if they ate something, but, like, their parents didn't see what they ate? Oh, I guess that's why I don't know what. I mean, that's probably what it is. It's probably it. They do commas, commas, and periods. Some of the most common punctuation you'll we'll ever see. Let's see, my favorite German phrase is that, which is like grown by history. If you have a phrase for me that covers that, I would be thankful. Grown by history? What does that mean? Gradually happened over time. Just like a plant. Historically grown. I don't know. I don't understand. So many phrases out here. It could mean anything. Oop. Okay, we will put we will put this stopwatch. Put this up here. It means people gas you up. Historically grown. It's when when a system has a lot of cruft and technological debt. Oh, I see. Yeah, I, I understand the feeling of that. Also, look the bear's back. You could you could barely see it. It's so dark. Yeah, tech debt. You guys know tech debt? Isn't that the thing with the skateboards? Got a wolf. There's a wolf in the background. Anyway, I think that'll be it for today. You know, it's about that time. Let us see what day today is. And send a rain. Okay, today. What day is it? National Aunt and Uncle Day? Auntie's Day? Holistic Therapy Day? Uh, National All or Nothing? Bagel Fest Day? Whoa, bagels. Coffee Milkshake Day? The, what, the freaking Dog Photography Day? <laughs> National Dog Photography Day? Yo, guys. If someone was playing um, paparazzi, yeah, paparazzi. That'd be 
be the perfect day. World Tofu Day? And then a bunch of people's birthdays? Okay, let's do National Dog Photography Game. Or day, <laughs> not not game. National Dog Photography Day Raid. Alright, who's streaming? Uh, Choco Jacks is streaming Super Mario Sunshine. Let's see who else is out here. Streaming. We got people streaming. Actually, is anyone playing um, Paparazzi? <laughs> what if we raid? What if there's a VTuber streaming this game? Literally no one is streaming this game. I can't believe this. Okay, so... Chocojax is a dog? Yeah, but no she's technically not. She always says she's not a dog. But I've also raided her like five days ago, so I want to raid someone else. Let's raid, um... Some people. Well, there's people out here streaming. Let's raid. Let's Lua v Lucky. We were talking about Lua today. The programming language known as Lua. Don't go. No, I gotta go. My people need me. My people being myself. Okay, we're gonna raid Lua. But people, me, just me. Just me. Wait, Lou is a dog, right? She's a dog VTuber. She's got dog ears, right? It's a suitable raid message. Alright, um, thanks for watching. I will be back tomorrow. Dark Souls 2. We might possibly finish the game tomorrow if I can beat that boss. Uh, no guarantees, though. If I don't beat the boss um, tomorrow, then... Next time we're going to play it is two weeks because I will not be streaming next Thursday because I'll be going outside. I'm going to be having dinner with the uh, Toaster Koishi and Virachi. So, uh, yeah. Touching grass. And, yeah, that's it. And then Friday we got Miku Picross. I have an interview on Friday, so I can talk about that on Friday, you know. Saturday, more of that um, monster feeding game. Everyone's gonna have a good time. Thank you. Thank you, Mooney. I will stop talking now. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.